I have 7.30 also. Can you, let's uh, start the meeting. You want to do a roll call, please? Mr. Livingston? Here. Mr. Nath? Here. Mr. Lennon? He emailed me saying that he'll be late. Ms. Cimarulli? Here. Mr. Tolmer? Here. And I'm Joe Cower. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate all your hard work with getting the agenda and everything put together for tonight's meeting. Um, first on the agenda is reorganization of the Planning Commission. Um, before we get too far into this, I just want to say up front that uh, I'm not willing to sit in the chair for the next for the upcoming year. It's open and available. Um, maybe some point in time in the future next year, the year after, uh, I, I'd certainly consider coming back, but uh, I've got too many personal issues going on right now that um, make it a challenge for me. So um, I'll open it up to nominations for chair. I would, I would nominate Justine Simroli if I could. And I would nominate Tim Neff. <laughs> I appreciate that. I am, um, from my perspective, I, I shared this when we did first round of nominations. I, um, between 55 and 60 hour work weeks and the four kids, I would love to do it. I'm just not in a position to give the, the time and attention that it requires. But uh, and it, that's just shooting, honestly. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. I mean, Joe, Joe Cower does a lot of the work. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, being able to, to you know, um, visit with Joe at some point in time and, and we've done it via email is just making, looking at the agenda and just running the meeting and being able to delegate. So. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate the context, Dale. Um, you know, without getting too much into it, there's a, a lot of different things that I'm involved with and, and uh, I'm at the margins edge, so. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> okay so we've got uh, two nominations justine is that a hard no because I, I i would you know to... my concern is that do i really know enough to be able to chair this this committee all right um i've only been here for two years do i have the time certainly i have the time it's just that does Bridgeville deserve somebody that is more familiar with everything that goes on in this committee? Well, again, I, I, I'll, I'll say that, you know, um, you've got Joe Cower as a resource, you've got the other members as a resource, and it's just not you making all the decisions. It's um, quite clearly, you know, just, the process of, of running the meeting and, and keeping an orderly fashion and, um, you know, keeping things online. And, and if I could say, Justine, the reason why I nominated you is because, you know, the way you do carry yourself in these meetings, um, you're always prepared. You, you always do the research on every, whenever we have uh, an issue, um, you have background on it. And I just think, I think you'd be a very good president, uh, in, my, in my own personal opinion. So I, 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 I'm not trying to sit there and say, oh, you know, I know Dale came to us, you know, the last month and said, um, you know, that he wasn't, you know, the, he didn't have the time to do it. And, you know, all month I was trying to think who would be, who would be a good person to step in his place. And you were the first one that came to my mind. And how about Larry? Did anybody talk with Larry? Well, he's not here, so we can nominate him real quick before he gets here. <laughs> <laughs> can we vote on it? <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I, I won't, I won't speak for Larry. I, I think from conversations we had, just to get him to agree to come back to the commission after being involved a number of years ago, that I think he's happy to participate. He brings a ton of expertise. I, I suspect he'd be reticent to take on the chair role. We can certainly ask, but I feel a certain amount of confidence in expressing that. Well, all right. If only if 
I get everybody's full support when I need help. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely, Justine. That goes without saying. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I mean, this is a this is a team effort. Th this whole and that's the right. way it's been since since I've been on the commission. Is you know, it it isn't one person making a decision. It's it's a bunch of people. You know, looking at at looking at the facts, doing the research, and and you know, um, having that discussion to make this make the decisions. All right. I'll accept. Okay, so we've got a nomination for. Um, we've actually got two nominations on the on the on the floor right now. Um, Tim has declined. Um, so, nomination for Justine to to sit in the chair position. Uh, I guess uh, Joe, uh, help me out here with with um, protocol. I think it would just be a voice vote. Okay. Um, all in favor um, of Justine sitting in the chair position, signify by saying aye. 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 With my full aye. support, Justine. Okay. Justine, you got to vote here. Oh, I have to vote? Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Justine. And, and Again, I'll help you as much as I can. Okay. No, I'm not walking away from the whole right. process. It's just. Okay, so <laughs> nominations for uh, vice chair. Tim. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to retain that. I, I No problem. Provided the vote goes through, I should say, I won't get too far in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor of nominating Tim for the um, vice chair position, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Nomination for election of secretary. Secretary basically, um, is my understanding, is, is you know, the, the, Third in line for carrying on a meeting should the, the chair and vice chair not be present for a meeting. Um, you know, um, Joe, help me out here. They're supposed to be able to take some notes, but I mean, that's what the borough pretty much does with this. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be expected. Uh, I, I handle your minutes. Uh, that's a staff person. The secretary, though, like you said, was the President pro tem of the commission, the third in line, and it also does the the attesting of the commission on plans. There are, there are plenty of times when you see a lot consolidation where these plans come up that the chairman and the secretary sign. So you would just be attesting to the actions. Okay. I nominate Mike Talmer. That's not I agree. too many left at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured. <laughs> All right, Mike. I nominate Mike too. Okay. Mike, you okay with this? Absolutely. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mike Tolmer is elected to, to the secretary position. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate this. And thank you, Dale. Yes, thank you, Dale. Yep, um, sure. Adoption of minutes from January 7th, uh, 2020. Um, I'll take a motion to um, adopt. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Okay, Tim made the motion, do I have a second? I'll okay. second. Justine, yeah. Justine seconds. Okay, any discussion? No. Okay. Um, all in favor of adopting the mo uh, the minutes from the December seventh meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. You know, actually, uh, Justine, you should be taking over this meeting Ooh, since you're chair. Um, I will run it if you would like. Yes, please. 
and um, uh, starting next month, well, yes. uh, you make the motion to adjourn at the end and you know, we'll, we'll okay. go from there. How's that? Fine, that's good. Okay, new business. Um, there's a, a subdivision application for commercial street plan of lots submitted by IES at 368 Commercial Street, proposing the subdivision of parcel 255-G-255 into two lots. Property is located in, an industrial, in the industrial zoning district. The plan and application have been reviewed by the borough engineer and a comment letter that was submitted notes Notes the plan conform to the Bridgeville Zoning Ordinance Chapter 27 and subdivision of Land Development Ordinance Chapter 22, pending the completion of approval by the DEP of a sewage planning module. Joe, what, um, what do we need to know here? You ran down the list. Uh, this is the last lot at the end of Commercial Street. It's right next to Shannon Safety. It's that same parcel. You can see the tax parcel was included in your packet. Mm -hmm. The proposing just making it two lots. Okay. The um, plans, it's been reviewed by the borough engineer as the agenda states. It conforms to the uh, subdivision zoning ordinance. The only requirement is they have to complete a sewer planning module that basically is an engineering exercise to state that our sewers have the capacity to take on the additional flow. And their okay. surveyor is currently in the processes of uh, doing that. Okay. Um, comments from the planning commission? Questions? I just, no. uh, I was just looking at it, Joe. So there were some issues, but they, they're all addressed. Correct. You'll see in your packet was the yeah. two planning uh, review letters. One was by the engineer saying it was probably a whole laundry list, but yeah. all of them have been addressed. And That's the plan as submitted uh, is revised, satisfies all the requirements of the engineer. So we're ready for you guys to review. Good. Okay. And the DEP sewage planning module, that's a formality that's, that's, that's going on or going to happen? That is going on as we speak. Okay. So I take a motion to approve um, the subdivision pending the completion and approval of by DEP of the uh, sewage planning uh, module. I'll make, sure, a I'll make the motion. Okay, I'll Tim, second it. the motion. Second? Yep, I second it. Mike seconds. Any uh, uh, additional comments, questions? No. Not a, not a question, Joe, but uh, so they want to subdivide. Do they have an idea what they want to put in there? Do they mention or? They no, wanna... they. I haven't been told yet. Okay, just curious. Okay, um, do we need to have any further discussion or comment from? Um, is there anybody representing the the subdivision? On. The surveyor uh, emailed me saying that he wasn't able to attend, but the property owner was going to attend tonight but uh, I don't see him on the list of participants. Okay. Do we need to have any comments from anybody else at this point in time? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so we got a motion and a second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries to further pass this along to the um, council. Okay. Um, item number two on the new, uh, under new business, conditional use application for 621 McLaughlin Run Road, submitted by Antonio Carcelello. I'm sorry. Carcelello. Carcelello. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, of fully cocked ammo LLC for the property located at 621 McLaughlin Run Road with, within the multi-use zoning district. Operation, operating under the permitted conditional use <clears throat> as Pittsburgh power coating 
The applicant proposes a second business operation at this location, operating a light manufacturing operation within the same building, uh, which is also a conditional use subject to section 903.23 of the zoning ordinance. Light manufacturing operational proposed includes the reloading and retail sales of ammunition. The application and plan have been reviewed by the borough engineer. A comment letter has been received from him noting that all the requirements in section 903.23 have been addressed by the applicant. Um, anybody have any questions, thoughts, comments? Yeah, a couple of couple of questions. I see the solicitor on here. May, is it as simple as it? I, I just suspected that ammunition loading and, and sales would be more than just light manufacturing. Are, are there things that we need to worry about there with respect to how much explosives are on site? And yes. Uh, and, 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 and that's actually kind of the, that's actually the, the question. So just kind of to walk into it, potentially we have a mixed use district. It, it does allow even under its definition for some uh, industrial uses, typically light industrial uses. So then when you go to the light industrial definition, and by the way, let me just say this, this is a, a light manufacturing is a conditional use, not just a permitted use in the mixed use district. Why? Because there may be some ammunition factories and then there are others. One may meet the kind of criteria and another may not. And things that have an impact potentially on surrounding properties kind of good to have a conditional use. And actually the reason why with a conditional use you have a public hearing is that gives Mr. Caroselli an opportunity to show that not just as general or hypothetical proposition, um, but it, 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 with regard to the, how he's doing his particular operation that he can meet those criteria. So he does have an, it, it, so he's not, it's not a slam dunk and it's not a deal breaker. He has an opportunity to show through this process that he meets all these criteria. Just having said that, when you look at, and I've kind of studied, and Joe and I, Mr. Cower, have had an opportunity, and as you know, he has a pretty good background in zoning, et cetera. So we've had a chance to kind of brainstorm back and forth on this and even took around and look around the country, other places, et cetera. When you look at the definition of light manufacturing, um, um, Basically, uh, criteria C, uh, um, or actually just starting off on the definitions, it can be light manufacturing so long as, you know, uh, among other things, it involves no process that will produce a fire hazard, but there's not a period there. You have to complete it. Uh, no process involved that will produce a fire hazard, which will endanger neighboring properties. If I had a major ammunition manufacturing facility, I may not be able to pass that test. In the context of safeguards, uh, the volume, the nature of the ammunition that you're producing and or quantity, et cetera, you may be able to show and demonstrate that in your particular context, you meet that bill, that your process does not produce a fire hazard which will or can endanger uh, the neighbor, uh, neighboring properties, et cetera. So, um, and Mr. Uh, Caroselli may want to kind of speak to the board a little bit about how his operation kind of yeah. falls into that. You certainly yeah. will have an opportunity again at the, the public hearing and, and you'll want to do that. And then yeah, what we can do, and not to speak on, let me, I'll just wrap it up and, 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 and let uh, the, the gentleman describe what he's doing. Then what you can do if, if they put on that sort of evidence explaining what they're doing, how they're doing it, the volume, quantity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's for that reason that they meet this definition. We can turn that around and in the decision uh, include those as conditions of approval that you shall only have X, you shall only do Y, you shall only store Z, et cetera. And, and that's kind of why this is done in this sort of process. So having said that, uh, if anybody has any questions, that's why this is kind mm. of eligible mm. for consideration of approval uh, in this context. And you are permitted to approve something where with conditions where those conditions are necessary. 
uh, to do that. And by the same token, I've often said, and you've heard that conditional use is kind of like a permitted use with an Astra. So long as somebody can meet that criteria, if you could approve something with conditions, you're not really supposed to deny it if it can be appropriately approved and meets the criteria with those conditions added. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you folks. Yeah, Tom, I, yeah, I guess my question, you know, to follow up with Tim is, you know, we already, we have a uh, gun manufacturer here in, in town who does sell ammunition, I guess, what is it, you know, he's uh, in this probably Mr. Carousel can answer, you know, would answer this. Obviously you're gonna be selling ammunition, but mm -hmm. are you making your own brand of ammunition? Like, no, mo most of the ammunition, it's um, it, it's brand new or it's uh, once fired ant brass that's been prepped and cleaned and polished and everything. Um, by all means, it's gonna be a pretty small operation. It's just me, yeah, I have yeah. a single reloader. Um, you know, on a desk. Uh, so it's just me. So I can only do so much. Oh, so this is like you on a press, a exactly. shell at a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah we, I mean, we, I'm sure we have several of those operations already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the biggest issue is I'm, I'm applying for my FFL so that I have the license to be able to sell the ammunition and, and manufacture it, um, as well as selling firearms. But I'm probably not going to be doing much of that. But I wanted the, the, um, it's licensed for it anyways. But yeah, it's just a single press thing. All of the ammunition, as well as like the gunpowder, that's all stored in a really big safe that I have. It's fireproof for 60 minutes, I think it is, 1200 degrees. And, um, you know, the quantities of powder and everything I have, it's, it's going to be minimal. I'm not keeping, you know, big 55 gallon drums of it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. side. It's just going to be, you know, eight pound containers, you know, little gallon, um, gallon, um, jugs of it and even that there's only a couple of those do you need that ffl license to retail this yes okay yeah um humor me for for educational purpose ffl federal firearms license okay um so what what are your total quantities of of gunpowder um right now i probably only have 10 pounds of it sitting there I and mean, how much if you're up and running, is that what you expect to? I, I don't expect me to keep any more than 20, 30 pounds on site at a time. It, it takes a good while to go through, um, you know, a jug of that powder. You figure on, you know, individual bullets, they have very small amounts. So you can do several thousand rounds, um, you know, with a pound of powder. So it's not something I need to keep on site. I know other places locally that have it. So as I need it, I can just go and grab it. I don't want to keep something like that, you know, in stock real, real big anyways. Go ahead, Justin. So I have a question about, so if you say uh, right now you have 10 pounds mm -hmm. of, of powder and you're continuously reloading mm -hmm. bullets, is that correct? So between the reloaded bullets and the amount of powder, could you guesstimate what you think would be your total weight or total I, consumption? I'm not quite sure because right now with the uh, ammunition shortage, I'm sure as soon as I'm making it, I'd be selling it. So I won't be keeping a whole lot um, in stock okay. just because of that. But as far as how much I'd actually have been, I, I really, I can't see it being more than 20, 30 pounds. Okay. Really, like I said, it'll take me a couple weeks for sure to go through uh, that amount of powder. And then whenever I'm out, I can easily you know, run down to where I need to and just grab another small jug of it to, to get me through. Right. And then let me ask you about the, the storage. Because yes. everything, I mean, everything that I've been reading, and in fact, I was just out before, I couldn't get onto the ATF website. But <laughs> one of the things that I came up with was that the storage is not supposed to be in like a, a solid and in, in a gun safe. Okay. I'd have to ask, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I'd have to ask the, the ATF rep about that. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm waiting to meet with him after this. He won't meet until I get the zoning approval. Okay. And, and then once I meet with him, I go over all the regulations for, you know, paperwork, all what I can and can't do legal stuff. Okay. So if, All right. if he says that, then okay, then I can keep it off site if need be, or okay. put it in a, in a separate 
area. Yeah. It's the where I got the where I got my inf first information was a group called Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers. Okay. All right, and okay. so that was the that's my other concern is because I guess ammunition or powder needs to breathe or it puts off gases, and if it allows to build, then it can explode. So I don't oh. know. Okay, yeah, I know they're. I'm not sure about that because they're always in sealed containers. So like each, there's different types of powder, you know, different weights and all that. Okay, stuff. all right. Um, they're all in individual powders, and even whenever you get them, they're brand new and they have a seal on the cap. Plus, it's twisted on. So I'm okay. not quite sure how that would apply to that, but but so some that would be sure. something that the AT or, or your license will uh, provide information to you on how to store it. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll, you have to comply to that in order oh, to get your license. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. All right. How, how many different types of powder do you anticipate having? Um, like, probably only two or three different kinds. Okay. I think I'm wading into stuff. I'm not an expert on Antonio, but you could like, I, I think black powder, unless it's under pressure, it doesn't, it's not an explosive like you see in the movies, right? Exactly. Yeah. It kind yeah, of smolders. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's, you know, ignited intentionally, obviously, but yeah, just sitting there, it's not going to do anything. And, and, and thank you for mentioning that. If I might chime in and, and, and sir, you may want to kind of, include this in your presentation at the public hearing for example the, they they talk about hazardous materials and it sounds like like justine everybody's been kind of doing a little research um hazmat has materials that's a term of art and i noticed in some of the literature that that gunpowder for example and i'm not a hunter so i don't have the background it it may or may not be an explosive in a particular form of substance etc and how you're doing it so you're going to want to kind of do two things one present that because that basically you're not allowed to store hazardous materials on site it may mm -hmm. not constitute a hazardous material or if it is you'll have to come up with a means of off-site storage it certainly does contemplate some on-site storage of explosives because rule f basically says you have to inventory explosive. So I think it assumes that you may have materials that may be kind of by their nature explosive theoretically, but they may not technically be a hazardous material. Yeah. Um, so I think you want to present that. Why an exam even, you know, say the, the number is maximum 50 pounds. Why that is not a danger under that definition to the neighbors, etc. Why it's not explosive, how you would handle it. You don't want to cut yourself short. So um, for example, if you can put on evidence that shows or supports that 50 pounds or less at a time, properly segregated, et cetera, et cetera, therefore meets those definitions, you kind of, you would want to do that so that the board can take that into consideration. Okay. And then they can impose conditions accordingly, compliance yeah. with all the federal laws, compliance with everything that you tell us that you're doing that makes you, you know, one of these. Right. Can you, Mr. Casella, can you kind of walk us through um, your process? Um, you know, once you get up and running, I, I presume that you're probably doing this sort of thing at home someplace or doing it someplace else. Yeah. Um, kind of walk us through, you know, the process and, and safeguards and, and that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty simple process. There's not much to it. I mean, there is a lot to it, but... Um, the machine itself, it automatically feeds um, your shell down. If it's reloaded ammunition, like once fired brass, the, the, the whole press itself does everything. It presses the old primer out, pushes a new one in, fills up the exact amount of powder. There's actually you have a tube and it has, it's, it's set. So as you load it up, it puts the exact amount of weight of powder in it. And it goes to the next step, puts the bullet in, presses it in, crimps it, and spits it out. And it's just a continuous rotation of the bullets. And everything is all separated. All the, the primers are separated. All the shells are separated. All the, the brass, the powder, everything's you know, stored separately. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's complicated, but it's simple once you have everything measured out. And you go, I have different scales and micrometers and everything to measure the overall lengths of the bullets to make sure that they're within the guidelines, um, you know, the scales to measure the right amount of powder that's being put in there. 
primers, the primers stored with the with the powder? No, they're separate. Okay. Yeah. In this facility, does that need to be stored in the safe also? It shouldn't need to be. No, it's not really. Um, they're all just in individual packets. They come in usually boxes of like a thousand of them, but then each packet there's a hundred of them so you got 10 different packets within them they're they're very tiny and the only re only way that they would actually pose any kind of fire or anything like that is if they're actually struck with a, an, an ignition pin basically okay. or firing pin from an ammo so it has to be a very precise punch right in the middle of it okay the retail side of it is it just word of mouth folks who know that you do this are you planning on advertising somehow um, someway? i'm going to put a website up but I'm not going to be putting any big signage or anything like that up front. You know, up front, it's mainly going to be word of mouth and you know whatever I can sell online. Yeah. Okay. And I thought I can't find it right now. I've been looking for the last couple of minutes. Maybe Tom, you can help me out here. I thought there was a condition in here somewhere that said, you know, if you're storing these kinds of things within a business, it's just subject. The inventory is subject to the to the borough inspection. Am I making mm -hmm. that up or? If we're able to do that, Joe, is that something that we ever just take a note of and say, hey, like a, like an ER shop and watch the bike, we ever just take a pass through and say, let me get comfortable with what you're doing here? I've yeah, never been made aware of that. Inventory, that, that's under F, under the light manufacturing. It's one of the uh, general conditions of, um, and in fact, it goes without saying whether you paste it into your decision or not. It's just one of the definitions of a conditional use that the inventory uh, you have to keep an inventory of toxic, corrosive, flammable, carcinogenic, explosive materials, et cetera. That's it. It's be yeah. available upon request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that may be something, say, that our fire marshal may be the one, the vehicle through which such things are overseen, mm. so to speak. So in regards to that, do... do Say for instance, we do re we would require an inventory, and he provides that, or anybody provides that list of inventory to the borough. Will would we take that on good faith then? Would we accept that in good faith that uh, inventory? I, we would normally, yes, I think at that level, unless you have some cause to believe somebody is kind of certifying when they do that. I, I do believe that under his regulations, he's going to already, this is going to be redundant to his reporting and inventory okay. requirements. Uh, sir, is that the case? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's highly regulated. I, I understand. Okay. All right. All right. But on our level, there would always be, and frankly, even administrative through the fire marshal, through our fire oversight, that I, seems to me what might be the appropriate mechanism through which to even do customary inspections, periodic inspections, paperwork, et cetera, of that nature. Tom, is there a, is there a process already in place for doing some of this, these things? I mean, we have another firearms um, facility in town. Is this something that, that's already being done elsewhere? I do believe, and I think, uh, Joe, can you help me out? I think that, is, what's he producing up the street? Rifle barrels. Yeah, he's, that's basically, that's kind of a machine shop. Okay. Mm. All right, all right. Uh, level thing. I, I think he may retail sell firearms. I'm not sure on that yeah. level. Yeah, so he's, he's kind a of a slash, time. he's a slash retail slash kind of, you know, it's barrel manufacturing. Okay. So well, he, he actually would. Hey, Tom, he, he doesn't make just barrels. He makes, I mean, Shaw rifles are a complete rifle. But he's not okay. manufacturing uh, bullets ammunition. and fire, you know, ammunition. He's not manufacturing ammunition. He's selling ammunition. Yeah. Okay. He sells the ammunition in his store, but he doesn't manufacture it. I think there's a really, uh, I mean, a business is a business, right? Antonio seems like an upstanding guy. Sure. No problem with the business. It just feels like good practice to let fire service and police service no we got a bullet manufacturer potentially going in because mm -hmm. you just i mean the odd exception right where right. somebody targets the building i'd want my law enforcement to know that so yeah and, and frankly you guys have the that, that that's an ordinance requirement you can also through your record your conditions of approval uh kind of put a reporting back and forth procedure in place 
between him and you can affirmatively put that in approval that you know pursuant to f you shall and you know fill in the blank annually quarterly monthly provide or whatever to the fire department you shall consensually allowed at reasonable times uh, without warning fire marshal to enter upon the premises during operation hours etc you can you can do those kind of things and then in fact that's the reason why you have a conditional use that allows you the opportunity to kind of do that yeah you know you can hold them to their if they claim they only meet the criteria because of x then you put x in as your conditions and if you have other things that even in that criteria make it safe and make you comfortable that it is there safely etc those are all what you have the luxury and ability to do in a context of an application like this okay um further discussion questions i have more questions bring it on justine uh, is are there are any security uh are you doing any type of security yes like doors okay well, yeah, I mean, all, all the doors are obviously locked. Um, the main door where the safe is has a big, um, I don't know what you want to call it, almost like a, a big deadbolt lock that locks the whole door. But the safe where all the ammunition will be stored in the safe, um, and that's bolted to the floor so nobody can get in there. I have security cameras uh, inside and outside of the building, and I will be putting cameras directly over top of the um, safe to, you know, obviously see if anybody's trying to get in there. Okay. And and how many doors are there? There's one going into the safe room. There's another one up at the top of the steps, right? Yeah. And, and then there's one in the back. Are they, what types of doors are they? Are they? They're just uh, regular doors. So yeah, the, those ones doors, all up. Metal doors? The downstairs ones are metal doors. Okay. Um, well, you know, where the safe would be, they're, they're metal doors. Um, all the ones upstairs are just regular wooden doors. And you can, is there access, only access to the second floor from McLaughlin Road? Is that it? Yes. Okay. Is the building fire sprinkled? Uh, no, we do have fire extinguishers all over, but there's no fire. Um, sprinkler system okay anything else that uh, we haven't asked that uh, you think we ought to know about no nope. I'm, I'm fine um mr casello is is there anything else that you think we should know about that we haven't asked or I mean, this is an educational process for us just as much as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know it's something a little different. Um, not that I can know. I mean, we pretty much covered all the, the main basics of it. Like I said, it's mainly just me. Uh, my wife would be there doing paperwork and stuff for, you know, all the sales and everything. But, um, you know, it's not going to be a huge operation. It's going to be pretty minor, actually. Do you anticipate growth? Probably, yeah. But I don't know when, you know, obviously we're still operating the, the powder coating side of everything. So that takes up a majority of uh, my day right there. And the, and the, um, the powder coating business is downstairs. Is that correct? On the first floor? Yes. The gun loading is on the second floor. And um, so you don't have to worry about any type of explosions or anything like that in your powder coating? No, no. Okay. All right. Static's not an issue with the power, powder coating? What's that? Static. Well, that's why we have ground rods that go down through so there's no, you know, charge essentially. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, sir. Is there, is there any... Um... The operations don't occur at the same time, and is it prudent, say, and I guess with you being both of them, maybe mm -hmm. you can't, but is there some prudence in having a uh, uh, condition under which you agree that you will not perform both operations at a time, and is that a reasonable thing to consider in the context of the danger and balancing with your attempt and ability to do your business? Um, I don't think it would be a danger to do both of them at the same time. You know, I do have employees who are doing the powder coating side of things. 
um, I'm not opposed to, you know, whatever requirements I need to make, obviously. Um, but like, they're in separate areas, so I can't see any being an issue, you know, with doing okay. it at once. Then you make, and again, I, I only ask out of ignorance and ting off of the prior. Um, yeah, that's fine. Question. Uh, you may want to just cover that as to why that's not an issue when you discuss in the hearing. Okay. Uh, hey, under, under the category, maybe a picture says a thousand words, because I think folks, are, I don't know if we can get on YouTube and see somebody doing what you're doing. <laughs> Would it be possible? And it's no compulsion. And we're all yeah. zooming here. I, might you be able to make maybe a two minute little kind of video that would show how you do your thing at your bench and maybe show this that and we could kind of even post it up for the hearing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I it, that's it. Your option. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not to it. Okay, thank you. Sure, so hey. I think a lot of people are assume that this is this made, you know, this massive operation. And when you think of yeah. it, it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's me sitting there on a bench and just yeah. you know, pulling a lever, and, and that's all I'm it is. Watching my grandpa load shells all the time. And yeah, I was when I was a kid, you know, I measured the stuff, so it's not something. No, new. it's the, the only thing that makes it go faster is it's, you know, it's got a automatic wheels that you know feed the shells and feed the bullets down and automatically dumps the powder into you know precise measurements so it goes quicker but it's no different than you know individually loading each yeah. each one up so I'll, I'm, the only thing i would request and, and maybe you know tom you can tell me if it's covered under f here that, that all sure. the materials will be stored in a safe and, and we call out that access to that is easily provided upon request I would just, you know, if we need to go further and add a condition to say, again, based on normal working hours and nothing obstructive that you guys, you, Antonio, are willing to give a quick pass through to a fire marshal, to a, you know, police yeah. officer. And in, as a business owner, I think it's probably advantageous to you more than anything. So, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I don't want to be obstructionist that. and cause more problems than needed, but right. I, I think it's no. a, and, no, and that's frankly, perfectly fair. And, and, and frankly, and kind of just to chime in procedurally, uh, because this is just coming in and you're getting educated about it, there is time. We do have to go through the procedure where Joe has to kind of do a, a two week in a row advertisement and do all his legalities for mm -hmm. the for the um, for the public hearing. So I anticipate I would expect that that hearing is going to happen at the March council meeting, not the February. Having said that, the, the PC's options tonight are either to make a recommendation favorable or against at this time or simply to table it and you may choose to make your recommendation after you have a further chance to look at it and make a recommendation you know next month that could be submitted in advance and in that regard you could kind of formulate Tim and others you've kind of coalesced on some of the punch list that you might include and come up with a recommended and just for example if there was a recommendation that um, would recommend approval provided that condition a b c d e and you could fa if you tabled it tonight you'd be in a position maybe to consider and fashion such a recommendation at your option at next month's meeting so we're not to that point we're not critical path here where we're going to hold things up if we exactly exactly that's my point and joe am i correct that this would kind of hit the console uh, public hearing in march I don't, I was thinking it would be February. I didn't think we were going to go to March, but uh, what? Yeah, if, well, if we, the planning look at, is comfortable with this tonight, that's the only course we have to take. Okay. I, and again, I was just looking at the calendar with it being a 25th. You'd have to be able to get two weeks in a row, leaving a week, seven days or more before their next meeting to kind of hit all your buttons on the advertisements. And I know it's more expensive to do that if we don't use, not to get into the weeds, you know, your extra section, et cetera. Would it be possible, Joe, to get a, uh, the application for the FFL to see what it, it does cover? I don't have that. Uh, Fantonia would like to share that with us. Well, um, I mean, even, even if we just get a blank one, where do you, uh, where would you apply for that? If I say, for instance, I wanted to get one, where would I go to find um, that information? The ATF website has all the information on there. Okay. Uh, it's it's an application you got to fill out. I had to go to the state police station, uh, get fingerprinted. Um, 
I forget all the information I had to send in. I had to send in a lot of different information and then you send it in and wait for them to call you basically. Okay, right. Because you need our approval, you need the borough's approval before you get your license. Yes, correct? yeah, okay. I don't have anything okay. yet. That's, okay. that's the only thing that I'm waiting on. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, my concerns are not such that I want to back you up another month. Antonio, you're a local business owner. My goodness, I think that the language here that says access is easily provided upon request is, is where we want to be. So provided we think that's got some teeth. And if the borough has officials that would just like to take a peek and get comfortable with it, I, I'm OK with. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Looking, at the, looking at the calendar, Joe and folks. And in light of the other requirements that we've learned about regarding posting, et cetera, whatnot, I don't believe we're actually exactly two weeks out from the council meeting. It's actually not possible for us to lawfully hold a duly noticed meeting at our February meeting. So we would have to go to the March meeting. And it's everybody's interest, including the applicant, that because of the federal, they're the ones requiring you to kind of get your ticket punched, so to speak, properly on the local level to to do it that way. And again, that I do, you know, you can make a recommendation tonight if you wish. You can also, again, I'm just to let you know, table it and put yourself in a position to make kind of a more full recommendation if that's where you're going with the conditions you wish to recommend, you know, at that time. Uh, just giving your options, uh, at legal advertising wise, that we, I, it's not possible to have the hearing in February, or at least at the regularly scheduled meeting. Council can specially advertise a meeting that we can hold any time we wish through particularly the Zoom. With proper notification. Yes, yes. But we have more luxury. We don't have to try to hit our monthly schedule. If you folks wish to kind of schedule it so that it was, you know, we got it advertised, properly posted with the time frames, et cetera, you don't need to wait until the March meeting yeah. for council. Well, and uh, you know, at this point in time, it's, it's just a matter of trying to think about um, conditions. Right. My, my point is that if you take the luxury of time to do that, you could actually be in a position where the planning commission could fashion, make those recommendations and then hand them to the council so that they would have them at their disposal when council actually holds the, um, uh, the public hearing. And frankly, that might put council in a better position to fashion a decision because although they don't have to render a decision until 45 days after they hold that public hearing, the more you put the council in a position to do so, they may, again, at their option and if they're comfortable, they do the, and they can lawfully issue a decision at the close of the hearing following the hearing if they place themselves in a position to do that. And we help them. Um, Planning Commission, are you, where are you at with, with the thought process here? Are, are there conditions we want to add to this? Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I understand ATF is, is pretty thorough in, in what they look at, how they do things. Um, I, I, not having seen the conditions and, and requirements of ATF, I, I don't want to do anything I'd rather not do anything that um, duplicates what's already being done. I don't have an issue. I don't, I don't have an issue of uh, voting live tonight if that's if that's what you're asking. You know, if it, if it helps, if it helps, uh, Mr. Carcella, um, You know, and then as far as you know, reviewing it, you know. I'm sure we're going to be able to do that, but you know that's up to you guys. Well, and I mean we can we can just um, you know pass this along to to uh, approve it without conditions, or we can put conditions on it and approve it. Um, and that's where I'm at. Do, uh, are there conditions we want to add to this, Tom? I'm you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've heard a variety of them that you've raised topic wise and you can. And again, if you wish to act tonight and you don't think you have anything pinned down in terms of conditions, you can state them conceptually. 
Uh, for example, you could make a motion that might say, I recommend that it be the, the application be approved, providing that at the hearing, the applicant demonstrate they meet all the criteria uh, uh, of, of, of the ordinance, specific criteria that they store less than 50, and I'm making these numbers up, that they store less than X a month, that they store things in a manner Y, that they do things, you know, as you've discussed in these different manners, and that they meet all federal, state, and other regulatory requirements with regard to that operation and such other. Uh, conditions as council may believe necessary uh, as a result of the evidence submitted at the hearing. You could actually make such a recommendation in that regard. Well, personally, I feel as if um, I would like to more thoroughly get my head, my notes together and my thoughts together and figure out what it is that the ATF recommends and how we, how we coordinate with what they recommend or what's needed and what we want. So I'm for tabling it for the time being for tonight. Okay, you wanna make that a motion? No. You gotta make the motion, Justine, if that's what we want to do. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know I make a motion to table it. Okay, we've got a, a motion to table. Um, do I have a second? I'll second it only because, and I want to be clear to Antonio, a local business owner, it doesn't sound like we're going to set you back, right? We've got the two week stipulation. We can't get you into the February timeframe. We're going to meet again before the March council. So I just want to be sensitive to not causing you a month's worth of loss. I don't think we're doing that. We're beholden to the two week. That's a very long way of saying I second. We'll take advantage of the time that we have. Either way we slice it as, as I read it. Fair enough. Is that right. okay? So there's a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion, Mike? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll vote. For, I'll sure I'll vote for to table it. All, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Um, and so Mr. Well, Chairman, if I might recommend and just indicate uh, the, the manager, I'll, I'll, I'll get with the manager and we'll recommend that on council's agenda uh, in the coming week uh, that we obtain authorization to, to uh, advertise the public hearing and yeah. to be held on March 8th, which by the way, puts us right in the timeline. Uh, again, we're getting, you, you will get to the finish line picking up on Mr. Nash's point at the same time you otherwise would. Um, and then you guys can meet at the end. We can advertise it, get it all set up for a hearing on the uh, 8th and even be in a position at council's um, uh, preference to, to issue a decision at night if they wish to do so, based on your recommendations in the hearing that they hold that yeah. night. Uh, I, I, think, I think that's the, the route that we want to go. Does the council, uh, does the commission concur? Concur. Yes. yes. Antonio, thanks for being here and for answering a bunch of questions, some of which probably are beyond the bounds of what we really should, <laughs> should be interested <laughs> in. <laughs> no, you appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. No, it's, it's all about trying to, you know, trying to keep a small business, get a new small business in town. I mean, that's, that's how the economy grows. It's not going to be bringing in massive industry. It's, it's going to be bringing in small business. Absolutely. And, it's, it's a matter of just trying to make sure that, that we totally understand what's going on and, and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel as far as what ATF is already doing and, and some of yeah. that. So. Yeah, they're, they're pretty thorough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not making cupcakes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe I should, it'd be easier. 
<laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Old business. Um, 2005 comprehensive plan review table discussions from back in October. Um, um, some of the some of the issues that you know, I mean, we've we've moved forward with the comprehensive plan uh, recommendation. The manager, the council, already moving on that. Some of the trap, some of the pedestrian items, um, we're moving forward with. Um, I didn't know if we want to look at, and, and Justine's going to, you know, lead this, kind of lead some of the discussion, but I mean, it's going to take all of us to, you know, add our, our, our objectives and, and point of views to this, um, where we want to go with, with some of these other issues that were kind of uh, low hanging fruit, well, higher hanging fruit than the low hanging fruit that we already uh, took, have taken on. Um, you know, trails. Um, you know, obviously we're working on the flood and the Baldwin street issue, um, parking issues, um, small town enhancement, borough cleanup. Some of that stuff will be in, 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 um, wrapped up with a comprehensive plan, but I mean, there's other things that the trail issues, Mike, um, some of this stuff that maybe we look at and, and start laying foundation for doing some of this stuff this coming year. I don't have anything, Dale. Nothing, nothing major. I mean, we can start looking at uh, some of the pick off some of the, like you said, the low hanging fruit. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't looked at it this past month though. Yeah, well, and and I mean, I, I'm just trying to lay the foundation and help Justine for the coming year mm -hmm. um, with with some sort of uh, plan to to look at to to keep things moving. Um, Tim? No, I, for the, so for the, the plan that we're about to kick off, Joe, help me out with the timeline here. I think we were expecting RFP responses in the February timeframe, right? Will that consume at least some portion of agendas moving forward from review of those responses to follow up questions to hopefully having a, you know, sit down with one or two of them to actually get things underway? Am I overplaying that or do I, I think that's gonna show up kind of recurring month on month here for the next foreseeable future, is that fair? You're spot on. Uh, RFP deadline is the first week of February. We had a pre-proposal meeting with interested firms back on the 13th. I mean, it was a great turnout actually. There was probably a dozen uh, firms that attended virtually and had a good bit of questions. Uh, the game plan is like you said, is that we'll get everyone the proposal so that we can start reviewing them. While that's going on, I'll basically take the highest dollar plan and apply for a grant using that as our uh, our scope and budget. And then yep. we'll go from there. So uh, everything's moving as we hoped. Okay. And it was nice that there was a good bit of interest uh, from the planning consultants. I was nervous because I wasn't hearing anything when I sent out the RFP. But for pre-proposal meeting, it was very well attended. That's awesome to hear. So Dale, that doesn't mean we got to take everything else off the table. It's just, I think come next month, we're going to start picking up actual to do's out of, you know, making sure this gets started in a healthy way. So that's, that's, I guess, where my mind was at, at least for the first half of the year. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, when we laid this out last, when we laid this out last year, we were looking at, you know, trying to um, keep things going. Right. And, and um, you know, just look at, look at some of the table, some of the discussion for some of the th things that we didn't, we didn't uh, yep. pass on to the council for budget issues or, or action. You know, we want to try and keep things moving, you know, from a planning perspective into the future. Yeah. And it's all about, you know, keeping the, keeping, juggling all the balls and keeping them in the air and, and moving forward. Um, you know, and I don't know if we want to take take and spend some time looking at, at parking issues and maybe looking at the parking ordinance and, and inviting the um, part, somebody from the uh, parking commission to come in and, and visit with us. Anyway, that's... Um, I do have a question, Joe. 
Is there somewhere, and, I'm, and I understand that you do a wonderful job at getting grant money and applying for grants and being very successful with it. Is there an opportunity, is there one place or one group that you, or one place that has a list of all environmental um, uh, grant monies available from either the feds or the states? or even Allegheny County. I'm not familiar with this one-stop shop, Justine. Okay, all right. Because um, our representative was supposed to put something like that together. Um, not Pam, the other one. Um, the state rep usually puts a state grant guide together. It's a, a okay. book, all right. but it's usually just state programs. Okay, all right, all right, thanks. Okay, well, I just wanted to toss that out and have that discussion a little bit and, and you know, keep, keep some of that discussion from last year in the forefront so we can kind of keep moving forward with, with planning stuff. Uh, Dale? Yes, Joe. If I could just give a quick update. Uh, we touched on the comp plan, so everyone knows where, where that is. So mm -hmm. next month, that's going to be an agenda item just to bring you guys up to speed. Okay. Uh, a couple months back, we applied for an active transportation plan through Active Allegheny. I checked with them this week. They still haven't made grant awards, but they're saying that we should know if our project's funded by the end of February. Okay. And uh, that was a lot of our pedestrian issues we were trying to seek a professional mm -hmm. uh, eye on. So that grant's still uh, being in consideration. Uh, PennDOT, we've had the conversation with them uh, to do what they would consider their safety review for Washington Avenue. We're waiting for their, uh, for their response on that, but that's in motion. Uh, trails. A couple meetings ago, you, the commission asked that I reach out to Upper St. Clair and South Fayette to see if there'd be interest. Uh, before I reached out to them, I went to the county GIS and I showed the quick map of how Chartiers Park connects very easily through the Nature Center to Upper St. Clair's Rec Center and possibly to Fairview Park. And I sent that to the, ups, the other town managers. There was interest in possibly uh, us doing something there. I mm. meet with both those guys later this week to just pitch it at to them, but they were both interested. So this may be something that's gonna take a couple of years, but I could see a, a project put together soon to at least get the planning and engineering or a, 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 the concept and the a cost put together that we can start getting grant money uh, teed up for. So there was a lot of interest in that. Good job, Joe. Cool, uh, yeah. Last summer that came out, one of your slides was gateway improvements and welcome signs and some of those uh, acts to do, you know, improve uh, small town charm. Uh, council, as you know, in the budget, put in money inside for new welcome signs. Uh, council uh, purchased uh, five new welcome signs to town. So in the spring, uh, they'll go up and we can do some landscaping around them to start beautifying some of the ancillary gateways into town outside of Washington Avenue. So you know, everything you guys are talking about is working. It's just, it's, it's a slow process for some of them. Mm -hmm. And, and I want to I want to make one comment, Joe. Um, you know, looking back through uh, the manager's reports the last few months, um, you've been busy doing a lot of compliance and code enforcement things, and and that should be uh, um, applauded. Um, good job. Thank Thanks, you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. So the welcome signs that you say were purchased are they like any particular design, or are they? Generic, generic welcome signs. No, no, no. I'll, I'll email the group tomorrow. Okay. Uh, they're an attractive custom uh, Bridgeville sign. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Joe, do we have any uh, visitors or comments? Anybody that? No one did anything in advance. Okay. Is there anybody online now that would like to speak? Going once, going twice, going three times. Hearing nothing. Um, Justine? Yes. I, I, I'm going to, uh, you know, it's, it's time to adjourn. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's time to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I got a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. 
this is me signifying virtually. I'm <laughs> handing the gavel to Justine for, for February's meeting. Thank you all very much for the honor to serve you and Bridgeville. Thank, Thank you. you, Justine. Thank you.